Hi guys, welcome to the first uh, Unity tutorial. Today we're gonna, in this video, we're gonna look mostly at um, an intro, overall intro to Unity. We're gonna look into um, what is the Unity Hub, what, before we even open Unity. Uh, what does the interface look like? What are game objects, what are components, and what are attributes? This is gonna be maybe the most important part. Um, and then we're gonna have scripts and inputs. In those scripts, we're gonna uh, learn how to add a script, catch the input, and make an object move. Um, so basically, we're gonna go through all of these steps, and at the end, we'll have a, a cube or a sphere that moves around the screen. So let's get started with our Unity Hub. So we open our Unity Hub, and basically, this is some sort of meta software that allows you to manage all your projects and manage your installations. Um, Right now I'm working with 2020.1.6, it's the latest at the moment of um, the recording of the video. Um, if you end up working on another project uh, that requires a different version, then you can always add a new version by clicking here, um, and then uh, decide which one specifically are you, um, are you requiring. You can also add different modules, so let's say you, in this case for example, I can export to the web, I can export to iOS, I want to export to Android, I will add a module, a module, and I will add Android build support. And it will install everything, load, and then next time uh, I'll be able to export my project to um, an Android application. But for now, let's start by creating a new project. So we go back to project, we go to new, and we give it a project name, let's say day one intro. I'm gonna set it as um, a 3D project. We can talk about these um, a little bit more in class, but mostly we're going to use always the 3D project. Okay, so it's creating, it's loading, it's loading. Um, and now Unity has loaded. So this is going to be our basic interface, and it's um, the way we're going to work with it throughout the semester. Uh, there are four panels that you can see. There's one on the left, called the hierarchy. There's one on the right, called the inspector. There's one in the middle called Scene or Game. We're going to talk about this in a second. And there's one at the bottom uh, called Project. So, Unity is organized into scenes. These are basically um, uh, files which, which keep track of all your objects that are in a particular um, 3D environment. And whenever we create a new project, we always have a sample scene that is created. And in the hierarchy, it tells us which objects are in our scene. And we always have two things. We have a main camera and a directional light. So we can see something and we can light up the things that we see. As we click on those, we realize that the inspector uh, panel on the right populates. The inspector um, panel gives us information about each of these objects. So if I click on main camera, I see all the, uh, the, um, the information about what is in our, in our main camera. And we're going to talk about what all of these particular um, things are in a second. In the middle panel, there are two different um, ways to view something. Here, I'm scrolling back and forth, um, and I can zoom in close to my objects, I can move them around, I can click on the directional light, I can move this one around as well. Um, this is the scene view. This is sort of like the builder mode or the edit mode, which allows me to modify the objects that are in my scene um, as I want. In order to modify them in different ways, we can use the buttons on the top left here. There's the hand tool, the move tool, the rotate tool, the scale tool, and so on. So right now I'm in the move tool, so if I move some things on different axes, axes, um, it displaces or translates along these axes. If I use the rotate tool, I see that the UI changes, and I rotate in which direction my light is, my light is looking at. I can make the sunset happen. Stay at sunset, sunset is nice. Um, I can select the main camera, similarly I can rotate the main camera up and down, and you see as I rotate the main camera there's a preview on the bottom right which changes as well. That's the difference between the scene view and the game view. The game view we cannot interact with it, but it shows us what the camera sees, and whenever we launch our application by pressing play, it will switch automatically to the game view 
and this is what our end user is going to see whenever they open our app. So I'm going to click play again to stop it. Go back to scene and put my camera a little bit more down. I click play again. Then the horizon is up. So you see how the game view is sort of the final version here and the scene view is the, the editing mode. At the bottom, we have our project tab, which has all of our files. Right now, we only have one file inside scene, and we have our sample scene, which is the scene we've been editing so far here in the hierarchy. We don't have a main camera, and we don't have a directional light, because these things are saved inside the scene file. Um, they're not saved as separate items. We're going to see in the next video how we save separate items and put them inside our assets folder, inside the project tab. So this is basically, if you're familiar with um, Adobe software, it's the bin. So it's where you would put all of your assets, all of your files, and then the ones that you really want to use, then you put them in the hierarchy and they appear in your app. So this is our project tab, and the last tab we want to look at is the one right behind the console tab. This is where all of our programming related information is going to happen. So any sort of uh, print statements or errors or warnings or anything are, go are going to happen in a console uh, tab. If, you have something, if you're writing a script and something is going wrong, then look at your console tab. It's going to be the first step um, to find out what is, um, uh, what is the issue with the script. OK, so we have an overview of our Unity Hub. We have an overview of our interface. Uh, we have four panels. On the left, we have the hierarchy. These are the objects inside the scene. At the middle, we have the views, the game view, and the scene view. The scene view is the edit mode. The game view is the play mode, so to speak. The inspector on the right gives us more information about each object that is in the scene. And at the bottom, we have our project tab with the assets and the console. So now let's add a new object. And by adding a new object, we'll look into the model of game objects, components, and attributes, in which, which um, underpins everything that is done inside Unity. To do that, I go to game object, or I go to game object, and then 3D object, and I'm going to create a cube. And now I see a new cube has been created. I can zoom. It's very dark. Um, probably very dark because I was rotating the, the light before. So let's say I rotate the light a little bit more. Yeah, and now the sun is shining and the cube is back. Cool. Okay. And if I click on the game view, if I see it from the camera's perspective, I see that the cube is there. Cool. You see this little asterisk here close to the sample scene? That means the scene is not saved. And so, out of good practice, I'm just going to save my scene, click File, Save, or I can do Command S as well. Okay, the asterisk is gone, I can continue. If I click on Cube, we see a bunch of different things. Cube itself is the game object. When you see this little um, cube icon, that means we're dealing with a game object. It's, it's sort of the, the, the highest um, level of objects that we can have in Unity. Each game object then is made up of components. And all of these that you see, that you can toggle on and off that I'm doing here, all of these are different components. So there's the transform component, the cube component, the mesh renderer component, and the box collider component. And all of these are sort of plugins, if you will, that you add to your object in order to give it um, more interesting behaviors. For instance, the mesh renderer is the component that's responsible for making our, cu our cube actually appear on the camera. It renders it to the camera. If I click on the checkbox here, the cube is gone. If I re-enable re it, then the cube is there. Um, the only um, component that we're not allowed to enable or disable is our transform component. And the transform component is something that all game objects have. Because Unity is a spatial engine, it exists in 2D or in 3D space, in our case in 3D space, and everything that exists in 3D space must have a position, must have a rotation, and must have a scale. So transform is a component that we're going to use a lot throughout the semester. 
So that's for components. Components are sort of categories of, um, of attributes. So these attributes are, in, the, in this case, um, things like position, rotation, scale, or mesh, or materials, size, or contribute to global, whether it's true or false, or is triggered, whether it's true or false. These are all the different fields and the different values you can give um, to those attributes in order to modify the behavior of the components, in order to modify the behavior of the cube. So for instance, if I change the scale on the x-axis here, and I say 5, then it changes the transform of the behavior, changes the, beha um, the behavior of the transform, changes the behavior of the cube, and we see now we have this um, weird column rectangle on the screen. I'm going to set this back to 1, and we're back to our cube. By clicking game object, 3D object, cube, I create one from scratch, from um, a sort of a ready-made that Unity gives me. Um, what we could do as well is just create an empty one. We could say create empty, and we could say create a sphere. At the top, I'm going to give it a name. And I can add component one by one in order to constitute my sphere. I can say add component. First, I need a mesh filter to add act as some, some sort of um, skeleton. I'm going to click on the sphere filter. And then I'm going to add a mesh renderer, which acts as the skin. I'm going to click on this one. And now I see my uh, circle that appeared, right? In my scene view. And if I move this around, bam, my sphere is here. So the just with do these two components, I already have um, a sphere. And again, if I take off the mesh renderer, the sphere is gone. So basically, game objects are groups of components. Um, and by manipulating those components, we can make our scene interactive and dynamic. Um, a lot of what Unity is about is about finding game the game object you want to change, finding the relevant component, and modifying the relevant value. For instance, if we want to change the way our sphere looks like, we're going to click on material and maybe default particle. And now we have half a transparent sphere. We'll look into, more uh, into materials more in the next video. For now, I'm going to press Command Z and go back to the original uh, material of our sphere. If you want to move around, um, if we start having multiple objects and we want to move around the scene, um, there, are multi there are different ways you can do it. You can scroll in and out to zoom in. You can click on the hand tool to sort of translate around the scene, like this, move it around. You can click on, I have no idea what this is, or how do you call it, but this thing with the x, y, z axis to align your view on one of these axes. So let's say I want to see how it looks from the x perspective, I click on x and bam, I'm aligned perfectly on x. If I want to see it from the top, I click on Y. If I, click it. And if I want to see it from the front or the back, I click on Z. Once I have this, and I want to sort of go back to this freeform view, I would press Option or Alt on a Windows, and you see how my uh, icon transforms into an eye. I press Option, Alt, and I drag around, and I can rotate again. Nice. Cool, so now we know how to move around our scene. We know how Unity uses the game object, components, and attribute model. The last step is um, where Unity really shines is writing scripts for each game object. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a script, we're gonna use our user input, and we're gonna make an object move by changing the attributes of a component. Let's do it. So, I want to move my cube around. Let's say I want to be able to press W and S, and I want to be able to make the cube go up or the cube go down. So the first thing, because this is sort of a dynamic, customized behavior, I want to add a new script in order to, um, to write that logic. And a script, like everything else, is a component. So I'm going to click on Add Component, and I'm going to go to all the way at the bottom, to new script, I'm going to call this cube movement. 
going to click create an ad and, and now two things happen. Um, on the left hand side uh, the script was created as a file, an actual file on our computer called cube movement. And if I go to my cube, the file was added as a component to the cube at the bottom. And now it behaves just like any other component. We're now going to open it into our text editor. So I double click on cube movement. It's going to open up um, Visual Studio Code. And and this might look a little familiar um, to some of you guys. If you've used processing before, if you've used p5.js before, we have those two functions. We have start and update, um, which are similar to setup and drop in processing. Because we want um, our cube to move, we're going to um, write things in the update because it happens, the movement happens over time. It always happens over time. So to check, I'm going to start by doing a user input. And so user input is if input dot get key down. And then what kind of key do I want? I want in my case W. So I'm going to say key code dot W. And I'm open the curly brackets. And before doing anything crazy, before trying to move things around, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check that it works. And so I'm going to do a print statement. Um, the way that print statements um, work in Unity are debug.log and then the string we pressed the key w. I put a semicolon at the end, I save it, and now I click play and I press w. And you see now at the bottom left, we have the message, we press the key W. So our script did work. If I open up the console, we see the full message, we press the key W, we see where it came from. It came from cubemovement.cs on line one, on the update function, on line uh, 17 of the update function. And if I press W, a lot more of the statements are going to happen over and over. One thing I would like to point out before we continue is what happens if we, um, if we only have our script here in our folder. So I'm going to click um, on the cube and I'm going to remove the script component we have. So I'm going to click on the three little dots here, click remove component, and I'm going to click play again. I press W and nothing happens. Nothing happens because for our script to be executed, it always needs to be attached to a game object. Okay, just because you write it, or just because it's beautiful, if it's in just in your assets folder, it's not gonna work. We need to add it as a component. The easiest way to do that is to take your file and then drag it onto your game object. Now we're back. And we can finally we can continue and write our code to make things move. And we're gonna do that through script. First of all, let's check how a cube moves in the editor. I go back to our editor, and if I select the Move tool, I can move it on the x-axis, the red one, and I see that the position attribute inside the transform component changes. Right Now it's 2, 2.3, and I go left, minus, no, no, no. So these are the numbers that we need to change through script. I'm going to set this back to 0 and go back to our script. So, if I press W, what I want to do is what, I, what we will do always in any sort of script, um, which is to affect the scene, we get the component, we get the attribute, and we modify the attribute. So what we're going to do is get component, and then which kind of component do we want to get? We want to get the transform, and then we're going to say our position. And then we're going to say it's equals to a new position. And because there are three um, attributes, they're x, y, and z, we need to have a vector three, a three-dimensional vector. And a three-dimensional vector is just the way that you wrap three numbers together. And so on the x-axis, we're going to say it's equals to 
the current position. So get component transform dot position dot x because now we're only dealing with x plus 0 0.1. And then for the two other ones, x and y are not moving, so we leave them at 0 and 0. I put a semicolon at the end. I save it by going to File, Save, or pressing Command S or Control S. I go back to the Unity Editor. I press Play. And now I press F, a W, and the cube moves around. Cool. Right now it only moves around when I press W and I release it. If I want a continuous movement, we're going to change our function a little bit. Stop it, I go back, and instead of saying get key down, I'm going to say get key. And that means that whenever the key is down at every frame, we're going to move a little bit. So I go back to the Unity Editor, I press play, and now I keep pressing W, and the cube moves seamlessly. Now it's out of frame, and we need to get it back somehow. So I stop playing it, and in order to get it back, I want to press S and do the opposite than what we're doing in um, on line 19, where we're adding 0 0.1 at the X position. So I'm going to say if input dot get key key code dot s and in there I'm going to copy this part I'm going to paste it inside and instead of adding zero one we're going to remove zero one. I press play, I press W, I go right, I press S, I go left. So now you see how we could extend that with other keys by changing this part here and with other directions by instead of saying position.x, here we could say position.y, position.z and we could start moving our cube in different directions. So, I'm going to do this right now very quickly. We go back to the Unity Editor, we press play, and now W, S going up and down, A, D going right and left, Q, E going deeper and further away. The issue that we are having here now is that we're always resetting back to zero, zero, right? If we play, we see that like, I want to move to the side. But if I want to move further, it actually resets to zero, zero. Because we have all of those um, zeros here and here, here and here. We want to replace the zeros by actually the last position of, um, of our object. So what we're going to say is we're going to say vector3 last position equals get component transform dot position. And now instead of saying 0, 0, 0, I can say last position dot x last position dot z that's 
So now we've changed the code a little bit so that instead of going back to 0, 0, we're always starting by our last position. And we're only changing the aspect of our last position that we're concerned about in each um, key input. So W, I'm only changing the Y component of the last position. When I press A, I'm changing the X component of the last position. And then when I press Q, for instance, changing the Z component of the last position. Let's try this one last time. Going back to the Unity editor, pressing play. Now, I'm actually moving around in three dimensions. So this has been an intro of how do you add a script, how do you catch an input, and how do you make an object move by changing the attributes of a component. Again, most of Unity work is always going to be about what is the attribute that we're um, interested in changing. In our case, we want to change, say, the x component, and so the x attribute. And so we need to find which component it's attached to. And so we find that it's in the, inside the transform. And then in the script, we say, get the transform, get the position, and change the attribute. That's the overall philosophy of Unity. It's important to get this or to, to really um, understand it in order to be able to have any sort of dynamic behavior in the future.